Welcome to Frog Foot Holler, y'all. I'm Michael, my nephew Colton's behind the camera today. And today I'm doing the froggy dance. Do the froggy dance, do the froggy dance. All right, guys, so why am I so happy? Well, guys, I have squash in the ground. I have peppers in the ground. I have almost 40 pounds of potatoes in the ground. I have maters in the ground. I have a lot of stuff that likes warm weather in the ground. And well, the past two days, yeah, not been so warm, guys. See, it got down to 34 degrees last night, and it got down to like 36 degrees the night before. And around here, that's a recipe for some frost. But thankfully, our humidity was below average for this time of year, the past few days. So the lack of humidity did not, well, it actually helped me. Yeah. I love it when the weather helps me. Yeah. See, that cold weather mixes with that high humidity and we normally have a frost anytime we get start getting below 40 degrees. Might not be a heavy frost, but it is a frost. So I was really worried about my plants. Now, I took a chance because I had so much out that we were not going to get the frost because I was watching the weather and I was watching the humidity levels and everything. And I just took the chance and did not cover everything up. Now, was that smart? No. Was that stupid? Yes, very. And my nephew's shaking his head yes, too. Now, some people might call me brave, such as doing things different. And uh, I have to say to that, I appreciate the compliment, but I know stupidity when it comes around. So this was very stupid of me to do because any time that you have the threat, uh, threat of frost, you should cover your plants with something. I didn't do that. I was not smart. Nope, not at all. But I survived. Well, I survived, but also my plant survived. So I'm doing the froggy dance, doing the froggy dance. Yeah, buddy. Uh, but here's the problem. Guess what's coming in? Y'all, we got some bad weather coming in this week. Uh, starting tomorrow, it's supposed to have tornado-like weather. So guys, the, the weather is not cooperating with me this year. It is either raining too much, not raining at all, freezing temperatures, or burning hot, or wind is like forever high. I mean, come on guys, this is getting really weird. But as I said, the grand solar minimum is really messing things up. And you have to reinvent how you're actually gardening. And guys, all I can say, we're gonna have some fun times in the future with gardening because things will not act the way they normally do. Yeah. I, I, I'm what I proclaim as a experimental gardenologist. If you can spell that, more power to you. But I don't do, even though I know the scientific ways of doing stuff, I do not rely on the scientific ways to do things simply because things change. And well, every, the way we used to garden ain't gonna be the same way. It's just not gonna happen. Soil temperatures are staying cooler longer, or the rain is not coming in when it normally does, or it's just the plants won't react the same way. So just because something's not reacting the way it used to don't mean it's not gonna grow. You just gotta give it more time. You gotta give it more love. You know, that love and feeling. I got that love and feeling, yeah. Okay, I'm not talking about that kind of love, y'all. I'm just talking about more patience with your plants and just do a little bit more fertilizing than normal. Uh, not heavy doses, but light doses. A heavier dose, you can kill your plants that way. I like, like I say, be careful with the fertilizing because you add too much, plants are gone. If you add too little, well, the plants are still there. <laughs> so I, I would rather add too little than too much. So what am I doing today? Well, guys, since my plants have survived and I'm not crying a river of frog tears right now, I'm actually gonna be upstepping my gourd plants. Now my gourds, I have plans for them and I'll tell you about that here in a few minutes. But let's go ahead and hop over to the garden table and well, we'll take a look at what I'm actually gonna be doing. 
do the froggy dance, do the froggy dance. Froggy went a court and he did right, uh huh, uh huh. Froggy went a court and he did right, uh huh. Hey guys, okay. So we're over here at the garden table and I have my brulee, brulee, the warty gourds. I can't ever pronounce her name right. But we have the warty gourds, and I got six of them that I'm going to be up potting today, or up stepping, or stepping up, or putting them bigger pots. And eventually they'll actually be going into about 12, 12 inch diameter pots and going over my chicken pen and provide my chickens with some shade this summer, assuming everything goes right. But the reason why I'm having to up step them, and when they're so small right now, is because of this fact right here. Y'all look right here. Y'all can see the roots coming out of the bottom. That's not good. So I have to upstep them. And I'm actually going to be upstepping them to these right here. These are hefty nine ounce cups. Should be plenty big enough for what I'm wanting to do. And I've drilled holes in the bottom of them, just like that. Now guys, when you're drilling the holes, it's a lot easier to stack several of them together and put them down hold them and be able to drill straight down just like that now y'all know or some of y'all know i'm a big pro uh, proponent for upcycling every time i go into the store i'm constantly thinking how can i use this in another manner in fact there's some stuff i will not buy simply because i can't use it in another manner this is one of those things that you can use in another manner these are so good. Now, most of the time you see this and you say trash. But to a gardener that likes to upcycle, he sees planting pots, or she sees planting pots. All you gotta do, drill some holes in the bottom and you now can upstep your plants or plant in this directly. It's the same thing with this. You can start your seeds in this right here or you can up, uh, up pot, up pot, pot up. Step up. Well, I wish I could land on one I actually like to say. But guys, before you throw something in the trash, think about how you can reuse it. That is like one of the number one things I do is try to think of multiple uses on things I buy. All right, so I'm gonna set this to the side and I got something to show y'all. I got something I'm gonna use that I ain't ever used before and it ought to be kind of fun to watch a little bit of it. See. Home Depot has these bricks, burpee. This is coconut fiber. And guys, this comes off a of coconut. Okay. I don't even know why I just told y'all that. Y'all probably could have figured that one out. But this coconut brick, you put it in here, put some water over it, and all of a sudden after about two minutes, it expands to eight quarts. That's two gallons. That's a lot of potting mix. And it's good for seed starting. Now me, I'm gonna use this and this together, mixed together, so that way the miracle Grow gives some extra nutrients to the seeds or, well, to the starter plants. But I just really wanted to try this. So guys, we're gonna hop into super frog mode, get this into the bucket, pour some water over it, and watch it expand. And then we'll be right back after these commercials. Do, 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 do. Hey guys, so as you can see from that one little brick, that produced a lot of coconut fiber right there. Now, I'm gonna take some of this and dump it in. Not all of it, but some. Dump it in just like that. And I'm gonna take this miracle Grow. and I'm gonna dump it in just like that. Now, I probably about have equal amount of coconut fiber and miracle Grow in here right now. now I'm gonna take and get my hands dirty and get this mixed up real good. Oh, this is making a nice fluffy material. That's cool. 
I'm going to add a little water to it. Now remember that miracle Grow is going to be dry. So you may have to add some more water to it. I ain't going to add a whole lot, but some. And I'm going to give it another good mix. Uh, that should be pretty well mixed right there. That looks pretty good, don't y'all? That's nice and moist. I should have done that before when I started my seeds. That's nice soil to work with. Now again, I ain't never used this coconut fiber before, but I've seen other people have, and they've had good results out of it. Now if I can find my cups, whatever I've done with them, there they are. I'm going to take, put some of this in here. About like that. And move that out of the way. Grab my gourd plants. Now remember, when you're using these types of trays right here, it's best to be able to keep as many fingers on the plants as possible. And flip it over. Oops, I got too many coming out. Uh oh. Guys, this ain't working for me. There we go. All right, so y'all can see it's got a nice little root ball right here. And it's starting to get root bound. I try to catch everything before it starts getting root bound. I'm going to tease these roots just like this. And I'm going to put it down like that. Now this is one of those plants you don't plant no deeper. I'm going to take a little bit more soil and work around like that. Now, I don't want any air pockets, so I'm pushing down a little bit. Now, the roots should have plenty of room to grow now. Now, when I get ready to plant these actually in their final spot, this will allow plenty of roots for the plant to survive that transplant and well hopefully it'll be warm enough and not tornado season evidently to get the rest of uh, get get it growing real good and not have to worry about everything falling over so if we don't suffer no ice storms or no tornadoes or hurricanes or fire and brimstone i think uh we'll be all right with these now guys we're gonna jump into super frog mode and get the rest of these done real quick i have me a potted plant actually it's a stepped up plant so guys we got these gourds stepped up and well they're going to stay in here for a few weeks let the roots grow real strong before I put them into their permanent home. But I wanted to make sure they had plenty of room for the roots to grow, and this will allow that. All right, guys. So we've had fun today, and I appreciate y'all joining in. But I got some other stuff to do. So that's been Michael with Frogfoot Holler saying y'all have a froggy day. <laughs>